All right, let's look at problem number five. I'll read it to you. A 50 kilogram sprinter starting from rest runs 50 meters in seven seconds at a constant acceleration. A, what is the magnitude of the horizontal force acting on the sprinter? And B, what is the sprinter's power at two, four, and six seconds? So let's focus on A first. What is the magnitude of the horizontal force acting on the sprinter? Well, what do we know? We know that the mass is 50 kilograms. We know that he runs 50 meters and it takes seven seconds for that to happen. And our acceleration is constant, so those constant acceleration, or constant acceleration equations are going to be valid for us. And so also, if you're starting from rest, initial velocity is zero. You want to know the magnitude of the horizontal force acting on him and so what we can do is we can use a one of the equations that gives us the acceleration because if we want to know the force forces related to kinematics via f equals ma if we find the acceleration we already know the mass we can figure out the force that we need so to find the acceleration we look at kinematic quantities we're looking for acceleration and out of these the equation that we don't, or the equation that we can use is the one that doesn't have the final velocity. So that's delta x is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. And it's very nice because the initial velocity is zero, so this term is going to be zero. And we're looking for acceleration, so we can isolate the acceleration. If you isolate acceleration, multiply by 2 and divide by t squared. 2 times delta x, divide by t squared. And then finally to get the force, the force is going to be this times the mass. So it'll be 2 times the mass times delta x, divided by t squared. And we get a number for that. 2 times my mass, which is 50 kilograms times distance travels 50 divided by t squared t is 7 so t squared is going to be 49 you get 102 newtons which is close enough to the 100 newtons that we show here 100 102 so that's part a part a is easier part b what we need is we want to find the sprinter's power at the various times to do that we will have to find an equation that expresses p as a function of time p for power power is a function of time and then be able to plug it in so power if you have a constant force and it's going to be changing work over changing time but if things are changing with time then it's the derivative of work with time. Now, would you know the equation for work to be force times distance traveled? And there's another, so this allows another equation for power because you're taking a time derivative of force and distance. So I won't go into the complete details, but instead of work, you're taking a derivative of work, so force times delta x and then you take a derivative of this and when you have a derivative of a product you're gonna have power rule I mean product rule so this will be df dt times delta x these are vectors in the general equation plus f dotted with the derivative of your displacement now for our problem the force is constant so this is zero which gives us this other equation and the derivative of the displacement with respect to time is equal to the velocity so this if you haven't seen it is an alternative way of writing the power so instead of writing power as the change in work over time or the time derivative of work which are you know depending on whether you have um, forces changing then instead of writing it like this in terms of work and time you can write it in terms of force and velocity that's another formula for power 
So now that we have this, we're going to be able to use this because we will be able to figure out what our velocities are at 2, 4, and 6 seconds. And we know the force now is 100, 102. So what we need in order to get the power at these various times is a expression for velocity at the various times, 2 seconds, 4 seconds, 6 seconds. Well, we know the acceleration now. And so we can go back and say, all right, well, if I know my acceleration and, you know, what will be here was still valid. This is still valid. The delta x is no longer valid because we're going to be at different delta x's. The t is no longer valid, but the, the, the initial velocity is still valid. And the acceleration that we calculated is still valid. So now the initial equals 0 meters per second. Acceleration is equal to... 2 delta x over t squared. Let's actually get the number for that. Here, just got it from, from the beginning over here. Uh, 2 times 50 over 49. 2.04. So that's our acceleration. And we want to know the velocity at any given time. Well, we have an equation for that from the kinematic equations, which is that the velocity final is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. This time is not the same as this time because this is a, you know, this is a time at um, the whole time that he's accelerating, but this is a time from zero to two seconds to four seconds to six seconds. So don't be confused there. I might have to you know, put a little star or something, but that's not the same as this one. So since V i is zero, V final equals a t star and we can just use that for the velocity here so now my power as a function of time is going to be my force which is a hundred and two times my v final which is acceleration times time and my acceleration is 2.04 times my time i'm going to use star this might have to be a star here and so all I have to do is multiply these and then multiply times the time, which will be 2, 4, and 6 seconds. And that will give us the, um, what we need. So the power at 2 seconds, power at 2 seconds, 102 times 2.04 times 2, 416. And the units for power are watts after I think James Watt and at 4 seconds same thing but we just use 4 instead of 2 832 watts and at 6 seconds twelve forty eight watts so over here it's written in kilowatts, but if you move over the decimal three places, it'll be 0.42 if you round it, 0.83 if you round it, and 1.3 if you round that. And that's it. Goodbye.